What's going on everyone? Big Sip here coming back with another video of World of Worship Legends and this is the last week of the Shock and Awe campaign. We're going to be seeing a lot of ZF6s out in the field. So I want to take a look at what the ship has to offer. Look at the three commanders that I think can make some viable and pretty different builds. And then we'll do some uh, game footage of what these different builds look like and how they can be utilized. Uh, if you'd like to see the full build details, I'm going to put some links down in the description to each uh, different commander on my WoWs builds page. But uh, let's start off. So just with this ship, so each of these builds are going to have the same four ship mods. Now the ship mods that I go with on this one are Aiming Systems Mod 1, Prop Mod 2, Concealment Mod 1, and then Gunfire Control. And what this ship has to offer is a main battery of three turrets with a single gun, one turret with a double gun, total of five guns, 128 millimeters. And on the torpedoes, you get two launchers, four torpedoes each of a 533 millimeters. Now let's dig into our first commander. And he is the probably the best destroyer commander when it comes to inspirations. And uh, so far, he does command the majority of my German destroyers. We're going to take a look at Eric Bay first. Bay's base trait, the best thing about him, shifty, reduces the detectability of all destroyers, and uh, if you get them fully leveled up, it can be 6% reduction in detectability. Slot 1, going with observant range. Slot 2, look at me now. 3, perceptive. 4, smoke on the water. And the legendary skill of unstoppable. And uh, so over here on the left, you'll see I'll be going through the actual stats. Uh, I'm not going to talk about them, but you can see them over here in the charts. But this build is kind of the standard German build. You know, it's balanced torpedoes and guns, um, high health pool. Because I am going with inspirations of Swirsky as the first to get the detectability down a little bit further. And then Sims as the second. And Sims gives me an extra 320 hit points per tier. So you see, with where I have Sims right now, it's nearly a 20,000 health point destroyer, which is really huge. Um, the one takeaway I do have is this one is a little bit slower in the water. I prefer to have a little bit more speed. But as you see here, as we're engaging the, the ZF-6 on the other team, the guns are doing a good job. Nice slow reload time. Um, between the three builds, it is the lowest rebuild that I have come up with. Or reload, rather. Um, you see the torpedoes getting hits. One thing I have noticed about these torpedoes, they cause flooding fairly often. Um, so a, a really big perk. Bay does give us the 6% fire chance. Uh, right here, I, I didn't notice it earlier, but it was definitely the Bart that I had hit with that torpedo. So I should have known they were in damage con. Not able to catch a fire while they're in damage con. So that's unfortunate, but still getting some decent damage with the main battery. One thing that this boat is equipped with is a main battery reload booster. You get one of them per match, and uh, it's very effective, especially uh, when you're in gunfights with other destroyers. The HE max damage on these shells are pretty weak, um, and definitely towards the bottom end of uh, strength-wise. So you really need that reload booster when you get in close quarter gunfights with other destroyers. But overall, I do think this ship is pretty strong. And this build is, is kind of a middle of the road build. It, it's kind of a jack of all trades. And uh, it's definitely very serviceable. All right, for our second commander, we're gonna be taking a look at Reinhard Shear. And uh, this is kind of an interesting build. I wanna mess with it a little bit more. I think this build will be very successful in divisions. But uh, with his base trait, Fire Alarm, it reduces your chance of catching fire, as well as the reload time on Damage Con. Burn it down, XXL. Look at me now. Back in stock. Reaching out, XXL. And then fully packed. And that fully packed is the key to this build. Gives you plus one consumables on smoke, engine reload, and the main battery reload booster. And I'm going to be using this build just as I am right here. I want to provide cover for my radar cruiser, allow them to get close, 
so that we can ambush the destroyer that's moving into the cap. You see there's four destroyers in each team, so I'm fairly confident there's a destroyer over here, especially since I'm located. So I'm going to go ahead, set that first smoke screen, and push into the cap. I want to be spotting out here for that Cleveland. If for some reason I don't get spotted, but we get locked up on the cap, I'll look back at the Cleveland, I'll ask them for some support, and some intelligence data, hopefully they can pop radar, and we can see where the destroyer is. So I really like this build exactly for this part. You're just going to be setting a trap for the enemy destroyers. I don't want to push up too far. I do want to stay decently close to these ships um, for a couple of reasons. The first reason, I want to be able to trigger the proximity on my fully packed. When you're within range of enemy or friendly ships, it will greatly reduce the time to reload. Here, we're doing exactly what we wanted to. Fortunately, you got a little bit more lucky, caught the Z-23 with the torpedo, and then right there, they're down and out. 10 second engagement. I am spotted here a little bit, which tells me there's another destroyer nearby. But overall, I really am interested in this build. Three engine boosts, because you can really get this ship up to speed when you have that engine boost active. Um, when you don't have it active, it's a little bit slower. Um, the one downsides to this build is that you do lose twist and track. Um, you also lose unstoppable. Um, so if you do have your damage con in, re in cooldown, and your engine gets knocked out, you're going to be dead in the water. So that is one major downside. This is uh, real similar to the Beeply build I was doing with the gearing and Fletcher. Um, but something to be looked at, and especially if you're running a div. I think it's going to be really strong. Um, the, the torpedoes are a little bit faster than the bay build, as you'll see there in the chart. Not uh, significantly so. But overall, when it comes to the torpedoes, this is one of the highest DPMs um, for the ZF-6. Alright, last but not least for the commanders, I want to take a look at Blue Furoria. Uh, she is, I think, the most fun and a great flooding and fire spamming ship, as you'll see here. So pay attention. We just got our first flooding on that Yamato. We're going to come back to that here in a second. But Blue, she has a base trait of riding on the wind, which increases the maximum speed of your destroyer. Her first slot is going to be Mosquito Brutes, and this is what allows the torpedoes to reload so quickly. Two, Fragile Threat. Three, back in stock. Four, destroy or be destroyed. And then five, unstoppable. So you saw we got that Yamato flooding earlier. We're open up with the main battery. We want to see if we can catch a fire. Right there is perfect. We're lucky enough to get a fire and an another flood. So we know that their damage con is in cooldown. You see the damage ticking up in the top right. This is exactly what this build is designed to do. I'm going to punish battleships that push in and uh, hopefully catch some off guard with how quickly that it does reload. Now, I will say, if you were to change that fourth slot on the actual ship build, switch it from the main battery over to the torpedo reload, you could get the reload time on these torps all the way down to 41.8 seconds. Now, uh, the, the catch is, you know, you do get the lower damage, but when you're throwing out torpedoes at that quick of a pace, this ship gets extremely powerful really quick. I, I do enjoy this ship. Um, this will be the build I'll be running the majority of the time. Um, I might switch off the uh, slot 3 on her from back in stock over to perceptive especially once I switch the uh, the fourth slot over to be uh, on the actual ship build, once I switch that to be the torpedo booster, I don't need the back in stock so much. And having that little bit of information of where the closest ship is would be huge. But overall, I think this is my favorite build. It's, uh, it's going to print a lot of witherer medals, um, especially with the guns. But uh, so here, let's take a look at the three and look at the pros and cons of each. So the pros with Bay is you're going to get the lowest 
main battery reload time. You're also going to get the most health points that you can get with this ship. On the Konzo, you're going to have the highest torp reload, and you only get one of the main battery reload boosters. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say that's a con, just because that is the standard. But uh, moving over to Sheer, what you get with them, the pros are plus one on every consumable. That is absolutely huge. Um, in addition to that, you also get plus 2% over the other two captains on a fire chance. So you can uh, definitely use this as more of a gunboat. With Shear's perks, you get that increased fire chance over the others, as well as the increased range with the main battery. So you can stretch out the main battery range all the way up to really close to 12 kilometers. All right, and then with my favorite blue, you know, you're just going to get torpedoes like crazy and I think at this tier even with the reduced amount of damage there's still gonna be a maximum of 11,040 but what's more important is the flooding chance that's what I'm looking for because these are pretty fast in the water we're looking at 75 knots in the water so if I can get that combined with solid guns I think the blue will just make this ship so incredibly powerful and a lot of fun in general, I think the ZF-6 is going to fit in very well with Tier 7. It's not going to come in and be overpowered. It's not going to be like a Udachi the last time we saw a Tier 7 campaign destroyer. Um, I think it just fits in perfectly well. It's going to do its job and uh, be fun to play overall. Uh, hopefully, uh, I'm, I'm excited to see what happens as... Uh, we go throughout this week, we'll get to see what the next campaign ship is. But that's all we have for this one. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are. What is going to be your build for this ship? Um, I'm really enjoying it. You know, I have about 20 games in the ship now. And uh, hopefully you all will enjoy it as well. That's all we have for this one. If you guys have any questions or concerns, drop them in the comments. Happy to answer any questions. If this is your first time coming to the channel, consider hitting subscribe. We'll have a lot more videos coming at you shortly. Have a great day.